A buddy of mine told me a story. He said that he went down to the convenience store in the 80s and he bought a pack of wacky packages. Remember those? They were those stickers that had different brands that they would take and they would make them into something ridiculous. Kids making fun of my products with these stickers? Look, baby bottle poop. That's just gross. Well, in this instance, they took Oscar Mayer wieners and they made them into Oscar Moron wieners and he took the sticker and stuck it on a lunchbox of a kid named Oscar in his class and got him in a lot of trouble. But I think that's absolutely the reason for such a sticker to exist. Today on Toy Tantrum, we're going to take a look back and then into the present, which by the time you watch it will be the future. Anyway. They made them into little toys, wacky packs. Look at this, Chef Girl RD, Feminism Spaghetti. Awful bits. In fact, I have a whole pack we're gonna open and review. So this is series one of Wacky Packages. There's a series two. I bought about four or five of them and they were blind bags. They had five in each one. And what was really cool is that each one also had a sticker of one of the retro Wacky Packages you know, products. Uh, I've been buying the little mini brands just because I like little miniature things. And to be honest, I haven't been overly impressed. Uh, when they promise you five, you kind of only get four because the fifth thing in the capsule is either a little shopping basket or even a little paper bag, which to me isn't a toy. Uh, but these, you actually get five and a sticker and you know, a checklist and it's so cool. In this case, this was only 15 bucks on Amazon, believe it or not. And it comes with 20 of the 66 that you can collect. And you can see that they're gonna show you uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 of them. And then there's six mystery wacky package products hidden underneath. Now, from what I understand, some of these are rare, some of them are ultra rare, and obviously more collectible. So let's go into the studio, let's rip this bad boy open, and let's take a look at all 20 of these Wacky Packages minis. <laughs> wacky Packages rule! Wacky Packages minis. What a fantastic idea. What I really like about these is that there's so much value. For 15 bucks, you get 20 pieces. They're really fun, really retro, really neat spin on the stickers. Let's face it, are you really gonna stick the stickers to your headboard? I mean, I might, but these are a really fun little thing. You can put them in your toy displays. I know I'm gonna have some of the wrestlers holding on to some of these uh, products. I'm gonna take a look at the back. You can see the Quacker Oats and every one of the different brands and packages that are in there. Uh, there's also a checklist included and on that checklist it's going to show you which of the rare ones uh, are less likely to be found. So let's rip this bad boy open. This is a checklist it looks like yeah the old school checklist and I like what it says on the other side the new school checklist and it shows the rare ones so it looks like Big Leap Chew and these two are the rare ones all right let's see what we got start out with this one <laughs> jolly mean giant peas and all right we got <laughs> Star Trek reference, Chef Borg RD. This looks like it's six up instead of seven up. Six up. This was one of my favorite 
slum made raisins. This is fiasco sauce. Causes chaos every time you use it. All right, we got, oh, instead of chicken of the sea, it's kraken of the sea. Nesquack. And this is, uh, instead of making uh, chocolate milk, you mix your milk in with this and it makes mud. Fruit phobia. A drink for people who are afraid of fruit. Oh my gosh. Horrid extra dry body odor uh, enhancer. All right, so it's not a, uh, uh, any type of a deodorant. It actually makes you smell bad. All right, there's a girl on there wearing nothing more than a uh, bathing suit. It's Skinty Brand Peanut Butter. We have here Macaroni and Sneeze. This one here is Gurgle Baby Food uh, Pre-Chewed Mush, which is basically what baby food is. But instead of Gerber, it's Gurgle. Oh, I love it. Moron Salt. <laughs> That's absurd. And it's nerds instead of certs. I'm not sure what that means, but it's some sort of a funny brand. And what would wacky packages be without little bonus stickers? So there's a eBayer. So it's pills for headaches that you get by buying too much junk you don't need on eBay. I think I need a few packages of those. There's a skimpy. This one is a Kraken of the Sea. And this one here is, I don't know what that one is. I can't see. If anyone can see what that is, leave it in the comments. All right, these little stickers are a great little addition. I love the value you get for these. Uh, and inside we have, it looks like Mr. Clean, but it's Mrs. Clean. All right, Mrs. Clean brand. None of the rare ones have come up yet that I can see. This is, oh, I love this one. This one, it's a graveyard and it's Crips Ahoy. And this guy up. And in this one we have Fishbone Russian Dressing. We have Log Cave In. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it's a brand that is discontinued. Maybe it's an American brand, but we have here Putrid Cat Chow. I love it. I love the animal, uh, the dog food, cat food ones. I have one, Al Poo, uh, leftover dog dinner. Really funny. And finally, hopefully we get a rare one. And nope, but it is funny. It's, oh, this one's my favorite one. This one's fantastic. It's not Minute Rice. It's Minute Lice. So these are the uh, wacky packages, almost mini brand style toys that you can get and collect. And you know what? 15 bucks, that's not bad for all of these fun little uh, toys. If you have a kid who plays with dolls and maybe you wanna stock their kitchen with something a little bit unusual, these are perfect. What's that? Oh, it's time. It's time for the Q&A. That means I'm gonna answer your questions about toys, toy history, toy values, toy anything. If you wanna know something, go ahead, post in the comments your question, and hopefully I can answer it on an upcoming episode. All right, we got another question, and Ruby asks, how do you feel about knockoff toys from the 80s? I love knockoff toys. I especially love knockoff Masters of the Universe. There were so many different toy lines. Uh, the Remco Toy Company created the World of the Warlord, and Mattel attempted to sue them, but lost the case because you cannot own the rights to a barbarian-style character five inches tall. So once that suit was settled, every toy line, uh, every company, every toy company came out of the woodwork and started producing uh, generic He-Man knockoffs. And one of the ones that you could get anywhere at a, at a dollar store or at a Kresge's was the Galaxy Warriors. They were these slightly smaller, slightly flimsier He-Man figures that 
every kid had a couple Galaxy Warriors in their He-Man box. My favorite Galaxy Warrior is, of course, none other than this guy. He almost looks like a shrunken head. His name is one of the greatest names in the history of toys, Baltard. In fact, I even am part of a Baltard Instagram group, and we put Baltard in all sorts of funny situations. I've taken this very figure with me on a tour of the world and had him sitting on stage when I would perform in front of thousands in Hollywood, and it's always a good laugh because some people actually know what it is, and they'll say, I had one of those as a kid and hated it, but I absolutely love the Galaxy Warriors. Here's a little fun fact. The Galaxy Warrior figures were based on a lot of the characters that were portrayed in Frank Frazetta paintings. So if you look at the uh, cover of the Nazareth uh, record where there's a, a big giant goblin with a, with a tuft of hair on its head, that's where they got the Baltard idea from. There's a character called Hawk and he is from the uh, Snow Giant painting and some of the other characters you can see are also directly lifted from those uh, Frank Frazetta paintings that were very popular in the 70s and early 80s. If I ever get a van, I'm going to airbrush it with a scene with Baltar. So we have a question here from Lorraine, and Lorraine asks, Mysterion, what is an action figure that you are still looking for? There's a lot of action figures that I'm looking for right now, but one thing that I'm looking for in specific is an actually an action figure. It's the hockey rink, I know this is going to sound weird, that goes with these WWE hockey player figures. So these are the, you know, stick hockey, uh, very popular up here in Canada. We actually have a uh, course in school for playing stick hockey. You can get a credit in high school for stick hockey. Um, all right, we don't have that. But we do have uh, these amazing figures that go on a rink, and, and the, the rink is hard to get. Uh, I want to get the real one. I mean, I could get a real uh, hockey rink from, you know, secondhand and stick them on. But the, but the rink that these came with had a little puck with the belt on it, and that's what I'm looking for. And if anyone out there has one, I don't need the figures. I just need the rink. If anyone has one, I will pay, let's say, 250 bucks right now. And if two people have them, then that'll have to be another question for another time to ask what will happen if two people offer me up the rank. Fair enough. I guess then we can go down in price. And then maybe I can get down to like 20 bucks. That'd be perfect. It's the ultimate contest, the power on power. Hulkster skating in. Here comes the million dollar man. And you're in control. Big Boss Man beats the Hulkster. Shoot, score! Pat Jackson asks, with the success of the Masters of the WWE Universe figures, can you think of any other cool mashups that might work? Wow. Boy, I, uh, well, let's just think here for a minute. There were so many different mashups that already happened. There was Star Wars Transformers. I have a Slave One that turns into a robot Boba Fett. I saw a beautiful Shogun Warrior, a fantastic toy line from the 70s of Boba Fett. And they even just recently released one of Skeletor. It's fantastic. I have to get one for my Shogun Warriors. But what would I like to see? What would I like to see finally happen? I don't know. I have to think about that. and it's once again going back to WWE. So one of the main problems I always had as a kid was that the WWE figures were stuck in a pose. You know, they were like this. Even the modern figures that are highly articulated, I think they're great, don't get me wrong. They're a little true to life, too true to life. I have one figure that's a favorite of mine. In fact, I love this figure so much, I even have him on my jacket. And that's this guy right here. 
here and it's a tiger mask figure and it's from Japan this is a licensed figure this is not a custom and it actually is in the style of a vintage Hasbro G.I. Joe I would love to see an expansion on the Sergeant Slaughter of G.I. Joe to include other characters that are WWF I know that they have a Rowdy Roddy Piper uh, Grenadier figure that came out he was like Cobra's trainer and they have the Sergeant Slaughter I would love to see a Hulk Hogan I would love to see an Andre the Giant a Macho Man Randy Savage you know all the wrestlers not in G.I. Joe fatigue as themselves fighting alongside G.I. Joe if I got that I would be picking those up at the toy store I would be running out to Walmart right now I, you know, even if there's a lockdown and they were considered non-essential, I'd be taking those, I'd be pocketing those, I'd be walking out of the store. I would advocate for shoplifting to have those in my collection right now so I can have some competition for this amazing figure of Tiger Mask. So a mashup, I think it would have to be WWE and G.I. Joe. WWE fits so many different brands. He's not from WWE. He's from New Japan. There's five of him. One of them are dead. And he's also a superhero. But the mask isn't as cool. But the figures are expensive. I went to Japan once, you know. I actually went to Japan and spent over $5,500 on figures. But this wasn't one of them. No, I ordered him separately, so I spent over $5,700 on figures. Japan have really good curries. You can actually order food in the bus station in a vending machine and it's fantastic. I got a confession to make. I was staying with a friend and um, you know their mom would make dinner and breakfast for me and I would go out and eat first and then come back and then I would you know never have enough food so like I didn't want to ask for two servings because it's implying. And then we'd watch wrestling. Tiger mask. Okay, I think I've said enough. Yeah.